technology is amazing and it drives new things and it's going to make us more efficient. And it's, you know, eventually we're not even gonna have to carry the phone. It's just going to be with us. Right. Like, right. We're not going to have a chip, a chip up our nose and then the phone is going to be in our brain. (laughs) Exactly. Oh my gosh. What a great idea. You and I should go into business together and yeah. And you could like talk to our eye and put a picture there for us. Right. Like heads up display as we're walking. Like that's pretty cool. Hello, my name is Lisa Roger from Otimo, and I want to welcome you to the CIO podcast. All right, well, welcome everybody to another episode of CIO podcast with Lisa. And today we have a very, very, very special guest. Um, as you can see, this is Christy Grinnell. She's award-winning, and I'm talking many awards, Senior Vice President and Chief Information Officer for DXC Technology. She is responsible for leading business transformation, including defining IT strategy for new digital capabilities, streamlining current operations, and improving overall efficiencies and performances of DXC's IT environment all with the goal of enabling DXC to provide excellence and innovation to its customers worldwide. Her career in IT spans over 20 years, uh, during which she has led four major IT transformations, which we might get into a little bit today, overseeing enterprise-wide technology, cyber, risk management, culture, skills and behaviors. Christy, she went to school for mechanical engineering. I did not know that. You're like a real engineer. Uh, from the University of Pittsburgh. She also has an MBA MBA from Cornell University, Johnson's Graduate School of Management. So welcome, Christy. Thank you so much for having me, Lisa. I'm so excited we get to do this today. I know, I know, I know. know. This is going to be good one. I I just can feel it. All right. So please tell our audience a little bit about DXC if they've never heard of it, which would be amazing if they hadn't. But can you tell us a little bit about your firm? Absolutely. So surprisingly, more people have not heard about DXC than have, which was what part of the reason I'm so excited to do this. We are kind of the silent giant, if you will. We are a Fortune 500 company that uh, deliver IT solution services uh, and um, IT solutions and services uh, for our customers up and down the entire technology stack and integrated uh, within. We um, serve most of the Fortune 500 themselves and we uh, have 130,000 uh, of the most brilliant technology workers you've ever met. 130,000? Um, 130,000 across uh, more than 80 territories. So um, we are there for you wherever you need us. That is amazing. I mean, you guys are very like expansive, large, have a great reputation. So um, I always think, I always think it's shocking that people haven't heard of uh, yeah. DXC. Yeah. So, well, good. Get get a little get a little of that uh, marketing out there. Hopefully, get that get the That's word right. out. If your if your head's been in the sand, you know, here here's right. a chance to learn. All right. Like as you know, we're gonna get we're gonna have a little fun right now. Yeah. And I, and I know because we talked beforehand. You you know all about rapid fire. You know the rules. You know, the I side. am, but I was ready because you had some of the same questions and now you told me you're changing them up. So now I got to like be really, really ready. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you think it's, there's some old and some new because, you know, okay. there's some favorites. People have some favorites. So, yeah. yeah. So uh, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Here we go. Loud or soft music? Soft. Take out or dine in? Take out. Still or sparkling? Sparkling. Shoes on or off in the house? Off. Off. Uh, Unix or Windows? Uh, Unix. Beatles or the Stones? Beatles. Mac or PC? Mac. Dogs or cats? Dogs. I knew that one. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Chili. Chili. With beans or without? Without. Early bird or night owl? Early bird. Drama or musical? Musical. Uh, summer or winter? Winter. Ooh, coffee or tea? Tea. Samsung or iPhone? iPhone. Printing or cursive? Uh, printed cursive. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh my God, you're doing so good. You're just like, I know. Oh, man, this close. <laughs> All right, I'll get you. On prem or in the cloud? Uh, cloud. Bland or spicy? Bland. Star Trek or Star Wars? Star Wars, but I don't really watch either. <laughs> there, you know what? You're not alone. You're not I, alone. Yeah. There's a cut. There's been a couple on the podcast that have made the ultimate sin of saying that they don't watch either. <laughs> I know. I'm afraid to say it out loud. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Good job. You did an excellent Thank job. You. you all made it almost made it through with that little curveball of printing cursive answer that you know. Yeah. But we'll let it go. We'll let it go. We'll let okay. It go. Thank you. All right. So we're talking about digital transformation and you know, big focus for us at Otimo. And I know because just my experience with you with Capital CIO all these years and listening on calls. And I remember one day, it was uh, probably two years ago, two and a half years ago. And we were talking about transformation and you said, quote, there's IT transformation and then there's business transformation. Can you, <laughs> and, and if you say you're a CIO and you've done IT transformation, but it's not business transformation, it's not really transformation. What did yeah. you mean by that? Not to put yeah. you on the spot and quote you, but. And you, you quoted me with love, right, Lisa? Yes, like, I did. Good. Yes, I did. Okay, okay. Just I took try. notes and I'm like, oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah, have I done real transformations at Gen IT? Yeah. So look, as CIOs, I one of the things I love about our job, we have the best view of our business, right? We see across all process, we see how data flows and makes decisions, we see where it's broken, we see where it's accelerated and, and um, really driving value. We see um, how our systems are working and we see how our people respond to that, right? Mm -hmm. So because of all of that, anything we do in technology, we're not doing it because we think technology is like this great thing, right? While it is a good thing, it's for a purpose. We're solving a business problem. We're identifying a challenge and, and fixing it, or we are um, going after a new opportunity for the business. Every business is here to drive revenue earnings and cash. They want to make money, right? And so if right. we are not focused on that, if all I'm thinking about is, ooh, that's a really cool technology, I'm going to play with it and it's going to cost us money and it's not going to add any value to the business, then you're really not doing a transformation. You're just playing with technology. So you need to make sure that in any transformation that you're doing, as the CIO who sees across the business, who sees that landscape in a way that nobody else does, that we are truly doing things that drive business value each and every day. And so because of that, we're driving a business transformation, not an IT transformation. I love it, I love it. I wanna pull that thread a little bit yeah. because I like what you said about seeing across the organization, which means you can't be just with the IT team. Yeah. What? And, and we're going to riff a little bit here, but what are some of your, how do you do that? Like, so you're the CIO jobs. That's a big one. It's huge. It's demanding, but able to see everything. How, how yeah. do you, how do you get your insights? How do you figure it out? How do you figure out opportunities? Are they just brought to you or, and then you're nice or, I mean, how, how yeah. do you do yeah. it? Yeah, you know, it's a little bit of all of it that you said. So, you know, I've been here at DXC a little over two years. First thing I did to figure out what does this look like and how does this business run? I went and talked to everyone, right? I talked to executives, I talked to board members, I talked to customers, I talked to employees um, across our business lines, but also employees in the IT group. Because that gives you an inkling to what's working well, what's not working well, and how we work, right? Because they, they tell you what matters to them. And my my first question to them is, tell me your top three pain points. And from that, I pretty much learn everything and then the conversation evolves because you feel in that pain where the opportunities are and where the um, biggest challenges are as well. So you can you can use that to guide you. And when you you take all of that in, then you start to plot it out a little bit and you find some themes and you're like, okay, I know what I need to go attack now first because you, you're always looking for those quick wins. Um, but then you start to see like, okay, but are these symptoms of a root cause 
that, that's there, right? So you're, you're thinking about what that looks like. And in order to really peel back that onion and look at the root cause, I do um, what's called value stream analysis. So value streams are looking end to end process across your company. How does your company work? And if you can't say what that primary growth engine is or how things are done, then you really don't understand how your business works. So I can tell you that DXC, we get, we have an idea, our customer needs this, let's create an offering around it that requires this technology that we can sell at a cost that makes sense to our biz, to our business in terms of profit, but also in sense in uh, makes sense to our customers in terms of what they can afford. So we're solving business problems right from the start. So then we go out and sell it, we bid on an opportunity, we win it, we create a deal. We ha now have a contract, a contractual commitment with requirements that we have to meet that we then say, okay, let's go deliver on that. And when we deliver on it, that's putting people with really smart skills who can be in territory, who know the technology, who can deliver on that commitment that we just signed a contract for. And then we build a customer and turn it into cash, right? That's what we do as a company. If you can't say that about your company, if you don't know what that growth engine is, and look, manufacturing will be very different, legal services, pharma, they're all very different in how they work. But if you can't lay that out, then you can't solve all those business problems that we talked about. So by hearing those, I was like, oh, like people are having a lot of trouble with their time and getting that onto a bill for our customer. Let me look into that. And then we found out like we've got people because we're a company of merger and acquisition that they're on multiple time systems and they're having to enter their time two, sometimes three times and they forget and then they conflict and then you're like, this doesn't make sense. And then your bill is wrong. That's a problem. We have to bill our customers and get it in the back in the door, right? So um, those are the things that, uh, you know, having that perspective, peeling back that onion, listening really helped to, you start to find it. And as you peel back that onion, look out, you're gonna find a lot of ugly stuff in there, but that just gives you more of the transformational things that you need to fix. Ugly stuff equals opportunity for transformation. That's right, that's Both right. from Christy Grinnell, like, put that out there. <laughs> We're going to hashtag ugly stuff equals transformation. <laughs> That's right. I love it. But you, so that process that you just labeled, called it that value, I'm going to get it wrong. Value stream analysis or va right. value works, value work stream analysis. Value stream um, analysis. Yep. Now I didn't get it right. Value stream analysis. Yep. Um, and, and I actually have heard you say that before in yep. other meetings as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so is that something you've been doing for years and years or is this new to dx is this a dxc thing or is this a industry thing like if somebody were to chat gpt this or google it would they <laughs> so if you chat gpt it you will find it but not a lot of companies do it and not a lot of companies do it in a very mature way i've led this is this is i'm on my fifth transformation i've led four this is my second time in value streams and it's actually helped me to accelerate this time because by doing that, I'm really able to dig in and see that flow and see where things are broken, where data isn't getting to the forefront or data is just so wrong that you can't get a decision on it um, or whatever the case may be. So it's really accelerated my ability being here two years. Like we now have, you know, really leaped frogged in, in this last year to say like, wow, like we have some really good data now to make some good business decisions and we're going out to the entire company now. So um, it makes a difference. Value streams, a lot of people, some might call it um, uh, just end to end process analysis. Right, I, you some know, old school business mining. business yeah. process re-engineering pop into my head. That was yeah. big in these like BPR. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the, the big thing, though, is understanding that end to end process uh, that, that I just went through that shows that growth engine that then also feeds things like, oh, you need resources with skills. Let me go into my hire to retire work uh, value stream. Right. Or let me go and record the report to record that forecast and, you know, the cash coming in the door and all those things. And you have to understand those and how integrated they are. So it's truly just not looking at one process. And as you go through that process, the reason it's called value stream is you're not doing process for process sake, right? And you don't want to look at process and say, oh, well, that didn't, that's not very efficient, right? You want to get that as efficient as possible to drive value for your business. And you have to define that different ways, right? In a manufacturing company, it might be how much throughput you get, 
with the least amount of inventory. For us, it's how fast can we get people productive on a um, program working for our customer and billing that um, back to our customer. So it just depends on what the company is. Where's the value? So you just highlighted and pro proved out what you said at the very beginning. So in your role, this very unique position that you're in, you have to intimately know all the value streams, yes. uh, know how to tap into them because they're really, all of them are inputs, right? Absolutely. Go back to like systems analysis, you know, yeah. 301 that we took in college, you know, level course where we're, we're mapping our inputs on the right hand side and our That's outputs right. on the left hand side. Uh, for really transformation, you all of that left hand side, you better understand all of those value streams if you're going to have, you know, any, as you put it, be able to, to enhance not just the efficiencies, but bolster that value. Yeah, and look, and, and how do you measure that value, right? Because if you don't know how to measure that value, then you have no idea if you've made that any better or worse, right? So when you when you think, and this, this has been the really hard part at DXC, we got the process laid out. We figured out what that looks like. We see the data going through. We have all the technology to it, which there's way more technology than we want there to be. Um, to my point of this is not an IT transformation um, because that's dollars to the company that we're spending probably unnecessarily. So when we look at it, if we can get that metric, that's good. It took us a really long time to get to agreed metrics. And then what's the target we're looking for, right? Because then you can start to make decisions in your transformation of, okay, we want to go attack this. If we're going to attack that, what value is it going to drive? And what do we expect that new metric to be? What's our target? And that's a really hard thing. And most of the time, as we're doing this, I am going to change something in the back end and none of the savings are mine. None of the benefit is mine. None of the value is mine, right? Typically my costs go up as somebody else is getting, oh, I can bill more efficiently now, or, oh, I can sell faster now. Oh, I can write that RFP faster now. Oh, I can bring that solution to production faster. Like that is not something that I see as a benefit in my organization and what I'm truly accountable for, but it is for DXC value in driving our growth overall. So that's what we have to remember is that not about the technology, it's about the value that you're driving and it's typically elsewhere. I love where you're going with that. And I, well, uh, first off, it just shows that it's the part that it's not just all P or all IT and that you may change the metric. You really are talking about total cost of ownership for the organization. Yes. That's right. Not the IT. And so that may make, that might make you look bad, Christy. Well, when you're, it, you're met, you're met, you might blow your budget. I do a budget walk every year, Lisa, because my costs are going up and they're like, why are your costs going up? Well, I put this in and I did this and I did this, but remember the business cases that we proved out at the beginning of this, that finance or HR or our delivery organization should be reaping these rewards and benefits. And so as long as you go back and you're having those type of conversations and I'm a big believer in governance around the type, you know, how do you make these decisions? It's not my decision to make, you know, I, if I'm doing something that whole record to report value stream, which is typically owned by the CFO, that CFO should be the one banging the table for it and saying, we need to do this. Right. And I just go happy to do it. Right. Like we proved it out together. We got it. Like we know what to do. Um, but let them, uh, you know, fight for it because they're going to get the value out of it. And then I'm just making sure that, uh, we deliver at the end of the day and, um, and, and that shines through, which then makes it easier as I do my walk every year of what my budget looks like. It, it gets me to thinking I'm, I'm visualizing you in the boardroom right now, like delivering your budget and, and, uh, if I were you, I'd have like the rest of your C-suite partners standing behind you, defending your budgets. And That's right. That's right. right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it's interesting. I actually did um, over the last two quarters, I've gone to the board with our strategic investment plan for the company and it's a back office transformation. And in doing that, not in one place did I talk about technology. All I talked about was the problems I was solving for the business. I'm going to solve over the next three years, these five main problems for the business. And when we do, here's what you'll have. 
Got it. Okay. Christy, what do you need to get this done? Money and resources. Got it. Okay. Right? Like, that's great. It's hard to get there, right? It's taken me two years through the value streams to figure out what those things are to say, this is what we need to do. But now, like, if you listen to our earnings reports or any of our analyst um, uh, talks that our CEO and CFO have, we're talking about the fact that we're doing this back office transformation and this is where we're going to get from it. And we do have to spend that money to get there. Like, you'd rather be spending that money on offerings that we're taking, new offerings that we're taking to the market or our employees or um, buying back stock, whatever the case may be. But at the same time, it is really you know a necessary evil in order to drive the rest of the value for the company to help us grow we have to invest in this stuff and so we're going to fix the process the data and systems in order to solve these business problems go team i love it so you mean when you're in front of the board you don't have a slide that says hardware costs this many million last year and cost <laughs> this much million this year you don't have I that do not. i do not i have never had that talk now when we talk cyber we talk a little different we talk a little bit more technical but not but not about the business transformation that's great that's great well you know um and there are cios that never get in front of the board and then you know and then there are cios that align themselves with the business just like you said at the very beginning of the podcast yeah. um and having that unique view all over the organization that you really need to be in the boardroom. Yes, absolutely. Look, again, we see the business and I, I, I'm gonna give every CIO a pat on the back right now. You're operating your business, whether you want to or not, like it's on you, right? That's why our jobs are stressful because we're the ones making sure that they're running every day. But that also means that we're the ones solving the problems every day to get you know, the most out of our business that we can. Again, most of our companies are in business to make money. And that means that we have to see where that value is hidden in everything that we're driving. Technology is a reflection of your business, right? We put technology in place to drive process. If your process is crap, so is your technology, right? And people are gonna blame the right. technology, but you really need to look at the process. If your data is crap, it's because you didn't have good data to begin with, but your your people are gonna like say, your technology is giving me bad data. No, it's not. It started out bad and it's just flowing through the system, right? So those are the things that like we need to be super aware of as we go through um, and, and try and, and drive this. So where my brain is going so far in the conversation, you know, you can almost say that it's looking through a lens of right now and a little bit in the rear view mirror. But then again, I get to think about CIOs driving business. And this is where innovation and technology makes us look through the front of the windshield, right? Absolutely. In a very unique way. And I know we're riffing right now. This is not what we plan, but, but, but <laughs> can you can you pull that thread for me a little bit? Yeah. That that you know, kind of forward, how how does that all play together? Yeah, so like when when I think about our transformation, I'm not thinking about how do I fix all the ills of the past. I'm thinking about how do I get us where we want to go, right? And that's listening for those opportunities and fixing the things that need to be fixed to take advantage of those opportunities and drive that value. And I'll give you one example. Gen AI is what everybody's talking about. Oh yeah, now, right? Like Oh, we can't, oh, get Gen AI. It's like, can't get off the call without talking about Gen AI. You can't, right? And I probably hate myself a little bit that I brought it up. But when I think about that, everything I just talked about, like in, in our world, we want DXC to be digital DXC. What does that mean? Okay, you're digital. Well, that means that our processes are as efficient and automated as possible. That means that data is flowing through so we can make decisions. And you're putting AI over that process and data so that you are getting smarter in your process, getting smarter with your data. So you're making decisions for the now, but also for tomorrow, what my CEO would call the insights and the foresights for the business, right? If yeah. I can do that, that's great. But I can't do data just by itself. I can't do automation just by itself. If I do, you know, data automation, I've got automated reporting. Woohoo. Like, right? Like, great. Right. If I do AI over data, okay, that's good. Like, I have smart data to make foresights, but I still need that automation to be able to give it to me in a timely, accurate way. 
So I really need all three of those, data, AI, and automation to come together to truly be data-driven so that we had an automated way that's incredibly accurate of giving us that data to create those insights and foresights for the business, again, driving value. So like all of that needs to come together and the technology is going to lead us there. The more Gen AI comes into it, the more we're starting to write what some of that future looks like. And because we now have good data over, you know, automated processes that are efficient and making us work better. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this all plays out, but we're going to get smarter. We have to keep the human in the middle, I believe, to ensure that we're doing the right things. But all of that technology really needs to come together and overlap so that we really start to see the future and not just the now. Okay, that sounds hard. It is hard. Fixing messed up data, figuring out how to automate stuff. And oh, by the way, throw a flashy tech like AI on top of it. Yes, exactly. You better have some good chops to be able to do all that. But you know what? That's what CIOs do, right? We do hard things. Yeah. Every day, CIOs do hard things. We don't sit there and sweep things under the rug because we know that we'll break the business if we do, right? We right. have to give you good data. We have to give you efficient process. We have to give you that, you know, um, AI on top of things to make it smarter and, and get us where we need to go. We do the hard things. We ask the hard questions. We bring the right people together to have hard conversations and make decisions on how we move forward. But that's what I love about my job. So nobody brings me in if they just want status quo, Lisa. That's great. That's great. You're a little bit of a psychologist too, right? You got to get yeah, exactly a little therapy. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. I would, I want to tap into your broad experience and, um, and if you don't know Christy, she's tapped into everything and is just, just a forward leading leader and professional in, in our industry specifically. So, so where's the world heading? You know, from your lens, Christy, you know, and thinking about technology and thinking about innovation, not not so much DXE, although it could be a DXE answer. You know, what are we? What what's going on through your head? What's keeping you up at night about the world and and where we're going? Yeah, so it's such a good question. Like, I can we agree to have a drink like 10, 20 years from now, Lisa, and like yes. roll this back and see how good we are at predicting this. So um, from- I thought you were gonna say, let's have a drink this weekend, but anyways. Well, we can do that too, <laughs> tonight even. Um, yeah. But, <laughs> but uh, one of the things, AI obviously, for, for our you know, previous um, conversation, it's everywhere. And so one of the things that keeps me up at night about AI is um, if we don't do it right, if we don't do it responsibly, then we could get in a world of trouble. You know, I just read a um, article about an AI chip that they put up your nose that um, implants in your brain. Your brain actually loves it and it builds around it and it sends neurons to you and they think it's going to solve, um, for it's gonna cure Parkinson's. And their wow. next study is curing dementia. Amazing, love that. At what line does that become where, when is that person a human and when is that You're person bored. a robot? Right, yeah, exactly. Resistance like, is futile. <laughs> so these are the things that they do keep me up at night because well, I'm not working on transplanting chips into people, um, but I am transplanting you know, chips into our everyday process of what we're doing. And if we forget that there's a human in there that needs to make decisions, who has thought and reasoning, reasoning and ethics and morals associated with it, then like, I think we'll, we'll be okay, but we'll be okay if we don't forget. If we do forget, I'm concerned about where we are. The other part of it is watching kids grow up, right? Like I grew up, like we were talking about before this started, you know, you had the telephone and we'd wrap the cord around us and you could only go in an eight foot circle. Now we have these phones that can literally go anywhere with us. It's never not by my side. I actually right. just bought some new dresses recently and I made sure they had pockets so I could yes. have my phone with me, right? Like it's super important because this is my lifeline. It's got my calendar. It's got all my phone numbers. I don't have any phone numbers memorized anymore. Me neither. Um, which is concerning. It's got my calendar, like everything is in it. 
kids today, I just heard on the radio yesterday, this mom called into this radio station I was listening to, and she's like, well, when I punish my child, I take away either their iPhone or their Xbox or their TV time. The kid is four, right? Like, imagine yeah. what that kid is going to be at 20 and how much they know about technology and what they're doing. But we need to remember that there's other skills that they need to learn about how we communicate like this about how we make those good decisions with mm -hmm. ethics and reasoning and morals and all of those things there. So technology is amazing and it drives new things and it's gonna make us more efficient. And it's, you know, eventually we're not even gonna have to carry the phone. It's just gonna be with us, right? Like, right. we're not gonna have, gonna have a, chip, a chip up our nose and then the phone is gonna be in our brain. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh, what a great idea. You and I should go into business together and market. Yeah, and, and you could like talk to our eye and put a picture there for yes. us, right? Like heads up display as we're walking. Like, that's pretty cool. But we just need to think about what those mean in terms of, you know, true um, business value again and what we're doing and ensuring that we don't lose the forest through the trees, if you will, um, to make sure that we are driving good business. Technology is moving so fast. It's so amazing. And then I I wouldn't be me, Lisa, if I didn't bring it up the, uh, the diversity point of view of this. Like, I mm -hmm. still go back to... I watched a woman, I'm gonna say her name, Dr. Joy somebody, who, um, she's an amazing poet, um, but she also is an amazing technologist, and she talks about AI, and she's a woman of color, and when she was doing all these studies, AI, facial recognition did not, still doesn't do a great job of recognizing female right. women of color. It either says that they're a man, or just doesn't recognize them in a lot of instances. Now it's getting better and this is the brilliance of technology. We can continuously improve it and it can learn from itself. But man, how did we miss that when it first came right. out, right? Like that should never have been the case. So if we don't put the that diverse, you know, set of perspectives around all of this technology, again, I worry about where it could go. So I just want all the leaders today to be thinking about those things about are you keeping the ethics, the the, the morals, right. the values in there? Are you keeping the diversity in there to ensure we're looking at it from all different perspectives so that we get the best outcome and not just an outcome that really could uh, hurt us rather than help us? And when we hurt it, then it just sets technology backward rather than Focus. allowing it to go forward. And that's not what we want. Yeah, because whether it's technology or people, when you mess with trust. Yeah. Exactly. No, yeah, it's trust is once trust is lost. Yes, it's it's very, lost. very, very rarely gained back. Yeah, because trust is earned, right? And like, imagine, like, oh, we forgot about you. Sorry. <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. That's terrible. Um, talking about trust, it, it makes me think about leadership. Yeah. And again, for all of you who may not know Christy. Because again, your head's in the sand if you don't know who she is. Yeah. Um, what one of the? I mean, Christy is a leader, and you can see it in um, how she shows up in the world. You can see it um, how she spends her free time. Um, and there is an event that's going on tonight. Now, unfortunately, this podcast is going to like go yeah. to production. And it'll be yeah. OBE, but. Since both of us are going to be in swanky dresses tonight, um, I thought maybe we could just take a minute and, and talk a little bit about, you know, what brings you fulfillment, you know, through how you spend, you know, your extra time you, uh, on philanthropy and, and again, yeah. how you show up in the world. I'd love for you to share a little bit about that. Yeah, excellent. So. Lisa, I consider myself a servant leader and that's in my personal life and in my professional life. So like in professional life, I'm a servant leader. I'm here to serve. Tell me what you need, how I can serve you. That's, you know, motivating people, resolving risks, solving issues and problems, like all of those things. And you have to create an environment around that. I take that to my personal life as well by making sure that I'm also a servant leader by serving the community around me. 
And I do that in many ways. So, you know, I'm co-lead leader of my church, making sure that I am serving that way. I do a lot of mission trips. I've been to Nicaragua even this year for women's empowerment session to ensure that we are giving back to those not just in America, but in countries that have not nearly the same amount of resources that we do here. But I'm a big believer that that servant leadership is necessary and pays forward in so many ways. If I can help one person, that's one person who can help another person, who can help another, who can help another. So I'm a huge believer in showing as a role model that if I can do it, you can do it too, because there's nothing special about Christy, right? Like. I, I grew up with, you know, a sister and a stepbrother who used to like to beat me up and like tech, you know, in a brotherly way, like not in a right, right, right. harmful <laughs> way. Um, and, you know, just living through life in a normal Americana way. Um, but there's not enough women in leadership. There's not enough women in technology. Why? Like, why? So I want to be that role model to say, if I can do it, you can surely do it. And like, I'm so thankful for Caitlin Clark at this point, um, who, you know, um, basketball player. Yeah, love her. Love her. Just just I just want tickets to see her when she's coming to D.C. in June. I am awesome. so excited. I want to do the same and I want to bring my daughters. Like To have somebody who can change a game in such a way to Overnight. show up and say, you can't stop me, right? I can do it too. I love her Gatorade commercial where she drinks her Gatorade and she's like, I can do 60. That means you can do 70, right? If I can do 100 of these, you can do 200 of these. And then she says, if I can do it, you can do it too. And I grew up with a dad. I'm so fortunate. I grew up with a dad who always told me, Chrissy, you can do anything. You can do anything. And then you know, I ran track or I played field hockey or I uh, played lacrosse or, you know, just playing basketball in my backyard with my dad where he'd be like, see, look what you can do, right? Like you beat me at horse or you were the first one out of the gate or you, you won your race or, hey, you learned from that race when you fell over the hurdle, right? Like um, those are the things that my dad gave me that confidence to say, look what you've learned, look what you can do. And it's one step at a time. I want to make sure that I am serving the community by working with STEM for Her, Women in Tech, Girls Who Code, you know, the Cyber Guild, all of these different companies that nonprofits that are doing so much to help young ladies to really see that they can do it too and give them the confidence that they can go out there. And that's that servant leadership I'm talking about in the community as much as I am here. And we need it because we need that perspective around the table or we're going to get ourselves in trouble. So um, that's that's kind of what drives me to to be that leader every day. I love that. I love it. I love it. And I, well, I'm right there with you marching that same march. Um, yes, you are. I, and, and you and I, like, we've been around the road a few times. So, um, you know, I, I hope that we can pave a, maybe a slightly easier way um, and make, maybe, I don't wanna use the word easier. I I wanna say maybe less lonely. Yes, that's right. You, you know what I mean by that? Yeah, I do. I do know what I mean, you mean. You know, and that's, it's funny because as my kids are growing, I have a 19, 20 and 21 year old. They're all in college, two girls. I hope that I have raised a son who now respects women in the workplace and believes that they can do anything too and like wouldn't even question why they're at the table, right? I right. hope that I've raised two girls that can stand on my shoulders and be reach even higher than I am so that, you know, they don't have the same problems I do. With that said, I think I need to pay more attention to my son than my girls. And I mean that in the most loving way that like we need this to be everyone's problem, not right. just female problem, right? Like, it's not for me to go solve the fact that we don't have enough women in the workplace. It's for everyone to go solve the fact that we don't have enough women in the workplace. So we need to create workplaces that make it easier for women to work and have their voice heard um, at the table, right? Like, it's not enough to just invite them. You have to listen to them when they're there. And I think that starts with helping men to see it, which is why I've tried to create, you know, this amazing human son that I have, 
um, who wants to be a pilot. And I hope when, you know, the pilot sitting next to him in the cockpit is a woman, he's like, let's go. Right. He doesn't yeah. even think about it. Like, don't even right. think about the fact that it's woman or female versus male. Just you have another amazingly competent pilot sitting next to you who can do great things. And that's what I'm trying to really think about as we continue this march that, you know, we're going to go to a dinner tonight for, um, yep. you know, women in tech. And I hope there's as many men there as there are women, Lisa, like right. so that we are recognizing it across the board. Agree. Agree a thousand percent. Good stuff. All right. So since we're talking about children. Yes. Let's think about Christy when she was a child. Yes. That 18, 19 year old, maybe, maybe a little bit further. You're almost about to get out of college. You're, you have an opportunity to go fly in the Wayback Machine and whisper in her ear. And just based on how we've been talking all day today, what would you tell her? Jump. Jump in. Like, don't in. question yourself, right? Like, I, there's so many times when I first started out that I would hold myself back because even though my dad told me I could do anything and I have a great education and, you know, I, I have a lot of skills that <clears throat> from playing sports and from reading books and doing all sorts of things that, you know, I tried that I had the skills, but I still doubted myself. Like, and so then like I would look over the edge, but I'd like, mm, no, not yet, not yet. Like, and I just jump jump in like what's the worst that can happen you fail right right learn from it and then what are you going to do different next time right like why did i question so my my advice to me would have been jump i love it jump jump love it. <laughs> well christy i can't thank you enough for sharing this precious time with us and um all of your insights and wisdom and um, so many good nuggets today that I will still I will steal for later, but <laughs> to be They're expected. Yours. To be expected. Um, of course. And just uh, again, sincerely thank you. You're a busy lady, and um, uh, this has just been an awesome session. So yeah. Well, and Lisa, to you, thank you for your support of CIOs for being part of my pers personal board of directors and helping me in my own career and. Um, I just think together we can all do anything. So let's go do it. Let's go do it. Take care, everybody.